Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here today, and today we're going to talk about the test, uh, one of the tests I use in my office that I believe can just be extremely helpful for anybody who's suffering with an autoimmune disorder. And when I talk about autoimmune disorders, I'm typically talking about things like celiac disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, uh, cerebellar ataxia, uh, autoimmune gastritis, Bichette's, lupus, um, Graves' disease, Hashimoto's, and many others, okay? And, and one of the things that we see with, with autoimmune diseases uh, is something called the presence of autoantibodies, okay? What this means is that antibodies can be detected years before there's actually symptoms of damage to those glands, tissues, or organs, okay? If we're talking about the thyroid, for example, these autoantibodies can be detected years before we start seeing changes in the, in the thyroid hormone levels, okay? Um, if you're watching this and you're not sure exactly what an autoimmune disease is, then let me briefly tell you that what, what happens during an autoimmune disorder is that your immune system uh, begins to systematically tag a particular tissue of your body. It may be your heart, it may be your brain, it may be your lungs, it may be your muscle, it may be your um, red blood cells, it might be your intestines, you know, it could be any tissue in your body. And what begins to happen is, is your body systematically starts to attack these tissues. After enough damage has been done to the gland, the tissue, or the organ, the organ begins to malfunction. It begins to poorly, you know, function the way it's supposed to. And then ultimately, you, you end up with some symptoms, okay? For many people that are in the very early stages of this autoimmune disease process, the type of testing, the standard tests that are available often come back showing that there's absolutely nothing wrong. This is mostly, you know, I see this happening with a lot of people with celiac disease. I see this happening with a lot of people with Hashimoto's. And this is extremely frustrating because for a person who has all of the classic signs and all of the classic symptoms that something is wrong, they go in, maybe perhaps they go to Mayo Clinic and everything comes back normal. And so again, these people are told nothing's wrong and yet they have to live with all of these symptoms for many, many years until tests can actually show that something's wrong, okay? They feel terrible, they have brain fog, they're, they're irritable all the time, they're grouchy, they've got all sorts of unexplained digestive problems, acid reflux, chronic pain, uh, they can't think straight, they can't focus, they're tired, they're run down all the time, they can't get pregnant, uh, they're depressed, and yet they're dismissed by most physicians and being told that the only thing that, that uh, is going on is, is that you're just under a lot of stress, uh, you know, little, you're experiencing anxiety, here's some antidepressants, here's some anti-anxiety medications, and here's some sleeping pills so that you can sleep. What's really happening in many of these cases is that these individuals are at the very, very beginning stages of an autoimmune disorder, okay? And this is what we call silent autoimmunity. This is where the type of testing that I'm talking about today is incredibly helpful to physicians who work with people who suffer with many of these chronic health problems. Now, there's new evidence and there's quite a bit of new research that's pouring out as to the importance of detecting and, and looking for these autoantibodies. And what we know is that these autoantibodies can actually appear upwards of 10 years before the immune system begins to actually cause some, some major damage to those tissues, okay? Now, based on this information, physicians like myself believe that it makes a whole lot more sense to take a proactive approach and do something on a preventative level to do this preventative screening on basically everyone who either has a history of a family history of autoimmune uh, diseases, or they themselves have at least been diagnosed with one autoimmune disease, okay? Here's why. It's, and this is important for me to emphasize because just because you have a genetic predisposition to say celiac disease or Graves' disease or Hashimoto's disease or inflammatory bowel disease, it doesn't always mean that you're gonna automatically develop that disease, okay? Now, I tell you this because this is very much the mentality that many people still have today. 20 and 30 years ago, if your dad had heart disease, um, you're going to have heart disease. If your dad had cancer, you're going to have cancer. If your mom had a thyroid problem, you're going to have a thyroid problem. And it was almost as if it was 100% given, handed down by God. And so thankfully, you know, how we take care of ourselves uh, plays a tremendous role in determining what kinds of diseases we develop and what genes get turned on. So again, the, the point of, of me telling you this is that the genes that we have can either be turned on or they can be turned off based on lifestyle factors. And this is something, if you Google it, this is called epigenetics. And so, again, the point of me doing today's video is really to bring to your attention that silent autoimmunity shouldn't be overlooked. And it is being overlooked by millions and millions of, of, of um, doctors and, and patients all around the world, okay? So if you're wondering why or what are the other scenarios for running this autoimmune 
predictive antibody screening. The first reason is pretty obvious. You know, research is pretty clear on this one. People with one autoimmune condition are more likely to develop other autoimmune diseases. It doesn't mean that they're going to develop indefinitely, but they are more likely to develop these autoimmune disorders. So what that means is this. If you have Graves' disease or you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you do have a greater likelihood of developing conditions, especially conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, MS, or uh, another kind of autoimmune disorder. Interestingly enough, one of the research papers that I recently read showed that people that have celiac disease have been found to have a 20% increase in the prevalence of type 1 diabetes. So if you have an autoimmune disease, having this test done can really give a lot of insight into what you might be up against in the future if you don't start changing some of the things that you're doing. Among autoimmune disorders, we know that people that have Hashimoto's often develop celiac disease, okay? We know that people that have Hashimoto's often develop renal disease, okay, kidney failure. We know that people that have Hashimoto's often have diabetes. We also know that people with Hashimoto's also have inflammatory bowel diseases, okay? This is very, very common. Um, in patients with celiac disease, for example, there's an upwards of 20% increase in the prevalence for type 1 diabetes. So this is one of the reasons why you'd want to run this test. The second reason you want to consider this predictive antibody screening and this antibody testing would be uh, having to do with your family. Let's say that you have celiac disease or Hashimoto's disease or Crohn's and some other autoimmune disease and so does your spouse. And you've noticed that you have uh, a couple kids and your daughter or your son is starting to exhibit many of the signs and symptoms that you had, okay, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Because autoimmune diseases are genetic, your children, again, are at greater risk for developing one or more of these autoimmune disorders. So give you an example. This happened just the other day. I was on the phone uh, with a woman who's in her 40s. She'd been struggling with Hashimoto's. She was diagnosed several years ago. She had been put on, on uh, Synthroid. Then she was put on Levothyroxine. She had her medication increased. She had her medication decreased. And after all was said and done, years of suffering, she still feels lousy, okay? In conversation with her, she was concerned about her daughters, okay? She has two little girls. One of them's 12, the other one's nine. And she, her oldest girl was already starting to exhibit and, and have many of the signs and symptoms that this lady uh, is now currently uh, suffering and really battling with, okay? A little girl's gaining weight. She's experiencing frequent bloating. She's having diarrhea several times a week. She's complaining of her joints feeling cold, um, you know, her joints feeling achy. She's cold on a, on a frequent basis. And, and so, you know, the pediatrician told the mom, so she brought the, the little girl into, into the pediatrician, of course, and the pediatrician ran some blood work and basically nothing came back. And so the, the pediatrician just told the mom that she's probably just going through a growth spurt. It's something common for, for girls that are 12 years old to go through, and essentially she would just grow out of it. Give me a break, okay? Uh, this mom's, if you look at this mom's health history and all the problems that the mom is now just battling with at age 47, her daughter is walking down that same path. And I'm pretty sure that this doctor um, basically has his head in the sand. So let me tell you this. What I see happening, uh, let, let, me, let me say this, okay? What I see happening over and over to little girls and, and what's going to happen to this 12-year-old girl if we don't take a more proactive approach is gonna be this, okay? This little girl perhaps may have been you 10 or 15 years ago, but this is what's gonna happen. Um, in the next 10 years of this girl's life, she's gonna continue struggling with all the symptoms of her misdiagnosed and mismanaged hidden autoimmune disorder, okay? When enough damage has been done to alter the function, say of her thyroid, her TSH levels are gonna be off. Her doctor is now gonna to wanna to put her on Synthroid, put her on Levothyroxine, or some other type of thyroid replacement. Mind you this, Given her family history of her mom's autoimmune thyroid, her dad's celiac disease, nothing will be done to proactively support this child's immune system. And the child will most likely develop full-blown Hashimoto's maybe at 20, 30, or 40. Now, this poorly managed autoimmune thyroid disease will most likely lead to a host of hormone imbalances, more digestive problems, PCOS, endometriosis, anxiety, brain fog, depression, the list probably goes on and on. Uh, this is going to lead to years of birth control pills if she's having an irregular cycle because what do little girls get who have an irregular cycle? They get birth control pills to, to regulate it. She'll be put on antidepressants for her depression, bottle after bottle of Tylenol for the headaches and menstrual cramps, and perhaps by her mid to late 30s, uh, infertility, right? Which, of course, now she'll get some Clomid or some other kind of synthetic hormone cocktail to help her sick body become pregnant. 
Maybe she'll even have her gallbladder removed because of years of birth control pills that she was taking. By her 60s and 70s, now she'll be undergoing a hysterectomy, a mastectomy, because now she has breast cancer or uterine cancer, and her quality of life will be non-existent. Now, hopefully I just didn't describe you, okay? But this is what I've seen day in and day out over the last 15 years and reading thousands and thousands of emails that I get from people all over the world, okay? So why do I tell you all of this, okay? It's not to scare you, but any doctor who has not seen this theme play over and over and over in his practice has his head buried 10 feet or more under the sand, okay? This happens every single day. I work with patients all around the world, so it's not just happening here in the United States. It's happening everywhere and someone needs to point you in a different direction. So in closing this video, and I know I got a little, a little long-winded here for just a moment, but the number one thing here is that predictive antibody testing is a great screening tool. Uh, it's used to detect these autoantibodies. It's used to take a proactive approach to potential future health problems. Number two, these autoantibodies that we can measure will often appear at the onset of symptoms, okay, or I should say before the onset of symptoms, and before any deviations in lab values take place, okay? The point here is you wanna be proactive. Number three, if you go to my website, drhagmeyer.com, and you go uh, to the section titled Clinical Laboratory Testing, you go down to the section where it says Immune System. If you just click on that test, you can see everything that, that's in that predictive antibody panel, what it evaluates, and, and why it's so important. And you're gonna see just a, a whole slew of different autoimmune conditions that this predictive antibody panel can test for, okay? I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that you share it with your friends and loved ones who might be experiencing all of the frustrations that often go along with these early stages and even sometimes late stages of, of autoimmune diseases that don't get tested, okay? Lastly, I hope this, this test gives you hope in knowing that you don't need to wait until your immune system has revved up and gone into full throttle uh, attack on your body, okay? There are things that you can do to offset the immune system. There are triggers that we look for in our office uh, when we work with patients that have autoimmune diseases. In fact, that's probably gonna be the topic of my next video, understanding the autoimmune triggers. So until next time, stay healthy. I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Take care.